and my lovely anatomist and physiologist, Michelle Glass here. Welcome back to another chapter 17 video. This video is going to be looking at what are described as our primary endocrine glands. Endocrine glands, remember, are going to be glands that are secreting hormones. When we talk about endocrine communication, we are talking about releasing a chemical into your body fluids, which is going to make its way into the bloodstream. And that chemical then is traveling through the body. And then I like to talk about it as like that chemical talks to um, what we can call target tissue. And so we'll get into that kind of description a little bit more as we move along. When we talk about a primary endocrine gland, this is a gland whose, you know, primary job it is to make hormones. And we'll see that we have a lot of organs that are doing a secondary endocrine function. So just to kind of think about here, the heart is making hormones, but we don't think about that as the most important job of the heart. Instead, we think about the most important job of the heart as pumping blood, right? And so the heart would be an example of a secondary endocrine organ. So we are taking a look here at a picture of a model from our lab that does show out the endocrine structures. And so I wanted to take a few minutes of time here to try and label some of these primary structures. So let's start by focusing in on this sagittal cut through the brain. And we can see actually there are three important um, endocrine glands that are present in the brain. So this is again, kind of highlighting the strong connection that exists between the nervous system and the endocrine system. Remember we can see at the base of our, let me get us, make my ink smaller. We can see at the base of our diencephalon, we have the tissue called the hypothalamus. This is going to have like a really significant endocrine structure. We can see actually hanging off of the hypothalamus, a gland called the pituitary gland, which we can see blown up in this picture over here. So we'll take a look at that in just a few minutes. And then we can see sort of at the back of the diencephalon, we're seeing like a portion of what's described as the pineal gland. So right here in this blown up picture, the sagittal cut of the brain, we see at the base of the diencephalon, the hypothalamus, we see hanging off of the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and we see sort of at the back of the diencephalon, the pineal gland. If we take a look at the pituitary gland in a little bit more detail, we'll see at the front, we have a lobe called the anterior lobe, or we can refer to that as the adenohypophysis. At the back, we have what's described as the posterior lobe or we can call that the neuro hypothesis. Sort of in the in-between zone, we have what's called the pars intermedia. So we'll see that these different regions of the pituitary gland will be producing different hormones. When we're looking in the neck region, sitting on top of the trachea, we have what is called the um, thyroid, the thyroid gland. So we can see that in this image where we have it in the neck on top of the trachea, and then we can see it kind of blown up on the side. If you actually look at the posterior side of the thyroid, you'll see two sort of glands positioned on each lobe of the thyroid. So there's a total of four of these glands and these glands are each called parathyroid glands.
If we move down to looking at the glands sitting on top of the kidney, so you have two kidneys, you have these sort of triangular shaped glands that sit on top of the kidney. So you have two what are called adrenal glands. When we look at the adrenal gland, we're gonna see that there's a layer of cells on the outside that produce one type of hormone. And then we'll see there's a tissue in the middle that we've actually already talked about. So when we talk about the layer on the outside, we'll talk about that layer specifically as the adrenal cortex. Cortex means like the bark or the outer layer. And then when we look at the tissue on the very inside, we've actually already named this tissue on the inside, the adrenal medulla. And we've already talked about this in the sympathetic division, releasing both epinephrine and norepinephrine. In the same region of the abdominal area, we have sort of nestled in between the stomach and um, kind of under the stomach and close to the small intestines. We have a gland or organ called the pancreas. And what we'll see is that the pancreas is going to be doing both endocrine function and exocrine function. The key difference is that endocrine function, remember, is releasing chemical into body fluids, whereas exocrine um, secretion is releasing it into a duct. So that means it's in a special tube. When we look at the pancreas, we'll see there are these collections of cells in the pancreas that have this job of endocrine. And we call these pancreatic isolates. And you can think of this term isolate as like small islands. So we have these small islands of endocrine cells in this organ. Also pictured here and also sort of described in our OpenStax book as being primary endocrine structures, we have what we can collectively call the gonads. And we do see that there are two different gonads. We have the testis and then we have the ovary. Now, to me, I would actually categorize the gonads as secondary because their real job, their key most important function is to produce um, the sex cells, the gametes, that would be either the sperm cell in the case of the testis or the egg cell in the case of the ovary. But in order to produce those um, sex cells, these structures, these gonads are critical in producing sex hormones. And so really it's probably an equal function to produce the sex cells and produce the sex hormones. And so um, I'm somewhat torn, but you know, it can be appropriate to think about these as being primary endocrine structures. I have another model that we can take a look at real quickly. So this model here, is also used in our lab to help us see these structures that we've talked about. So what we're seeing over here is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, remember, is at the base of the diencephalon. And then we can see the front lobe of the pituitary, which we can call adenohypophysis. And we can see the posterior lobe of the pituitary, which we can call the neurohypothesis. And remember, this whole gland is the pituitary gland. Now, the key thing I want you to see from this particular model is notice you have two sets of neurons that have their cell bodies in the hypothalamus, but then their axons are extending into the neurohypothesis. So we'll see that there's a couple of hormones that the hypothalamus makes, but the neurohypothesis releases. You see kind of that 
maybe green lines separating the adeno hypothesis from the neuro hypothesis, and that would be that pars intermediate. The next image we have the um, see the trachea, so we have the larynx, which we commonly think of as the voice box, and we can see directly underneath the larynx, right on top of the trachea, we have the thyroid gland. Over here, we're seeing the kidney, and directly on top of the kidney, we have the adrenal gland. And this image here, we're seeing the testis. And then down below, we're seeing the ovaries. So that's our gonads. And this very next picture, you're seeing the muscle of the esophagus. And then you're seeing that thyroid gland has wrapped around. And on the very back of the thyroid gland, we see kind of these little pink shaped glands. There's four in total. And those are the parathyroid glands. And then over here, we're seeing the pancreas and it, the whole organ. We're able to see the duct that's there. That's part of that exocrine function of the pancreas. And then we're not seeing the microscopic view of those pancreatic isolates like we did in that other video. Or we're in the same video, so the other um, model. Okay, so this is our full listing of our primary endocrine glands that we're going to be really focusing in on. And so stay tuned. Our next video is all about what are hormones. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.